Well, that was the last few notes from Blood with Welfare, directed by Martin Hartfield. And that was the two moments from Fight in the Blood by Paul Levitt Cooper. So that was the end of uh, their performance. Uh, before the next band, which is, and I just got to look back at my notes, it's been a long day, York Railway Institute, directed by Chris Hurst. Uh, just a little note, we asked you, wanted to find out who the great um, xylophone player was for Ellen Silver, and it's Lewis Barton, who was aged just 11. So he was the talented young chap who we saw this morning and again this afternoon with Ellen. So fantastic for, for him, and we, I'm quite sure we're going to hear much, much more of him in the future. So well then, I hope he's on the way. Or probably he's having a pop an orange in the bar with his dad now at the present time. <laughs> Hopefully he is. And, uh, anyway, uh, saying about the people in the bar, we I've got to admit the, the bar must be doing a cracking trade. It's been a wonderful day here. The sun has shone all the time in balls, or as Dennis Skinner tells us, as always does the M local MP, of course. Uh, but the bar has been full, and all the people who were down there, we're going to give them a quick wave to everybody down there. I hope they're having a fantastic time. Don't get too drunk, but uh, please enjoy yourselves. It, it's been great. Um, the next band is York Railway Institute, um, and it's, it comes into a little thing, a little chat we're going to have about Grimethorpe Colliery Band, because the, the program they've picked starts with Pell Mell. Uh, by W. Hogarth Lear, of course, who, um, the pseudonym of Elga Howarth. On with the Motley by Leon Cavallo, arranged by Ray Farr. The soprano soloist is Kevin Moxon. Then we have the Pavan and the King's Hunting Jig from Music from the Elizabethan Court, which Elga Howarth brought uh, a little bit later with, with Crime for Lovely Music, that. And they're finishing off with Stravinsky's The Firebird, arranged by Ray Farr. So a Grimethorpe inspired program. Mm, very much so. And we're going to say. Talking about Grimethorpe, interesting times there as it's well. Just before we go into Grimethorpe, we were talking about the currency the programmes earlier. Now, there's nothing current about this one at all, but what a great programme. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got to get it. It reminds what was that? They had that iconic album, didn't they? Which was like a, a black background with a red, with the, with the the firebird. Red, red on firebird. The, yeah, yeah. Tremendous yeah, looking yeah. thing for yeah. that. Nearly up there with Jimmy Shepard on the on the front of High Peak, with his <laughs> album, which is perhaps the greatest <laughs> ever album. And you can't tell me. If you were an aspiring corner player, sometime you went in front of the mirror and thought you were Jimmy Shepard. <laughs> I think you had to have a black night jacket to do that. But yeah, nice. that was the only problem. Yeah. I, I mean, mother's overcoat. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I to do it there. So first of all, I'm going to test your knowledge. Pe what's a pal mal? What's a pal mal? Oh. What is a pal mal? Oh, See, no idea. No idea. A pal mal is a disorderly situation or collection of things. See, it's a, it's a pell mell of people in a, in a scrum outside Tesco's. In Scotland, it's a strumash. A strumash, yeah. <laughs> that would look the same. W. Hogarth Lear's strumash. It is that. Goes down well over the border. Over the Motley, of course, was from uh, Vesti La Guiba from the 1892 opera Pagliacci. And it's all about a poor old clown who's singing through the tears. And the yeah, reason for his tears it. is. His wife's been having it away with his best friend. <laughs> so there we go. I was going to say classic, we, classic opera story. Classic. Like. I was going to say we've all been there, but I don't know. Yeah. That, so <laughs> you, you never know. Uh, and then we've got the Pavana King's Hunting. It was great stuff, which Howarth brought to the contribution band in the final of the Fiber and Sweet. But going back to the Grimethorpe stuff, interesting times there. Always interesting with, with, with Grimethorpe. Philip McCann has gone there now as the musical director, I understand, after Bob Charles uh, has left because of the travel arrangements. He wants to spend time with his family, understandably so. Uh, but always interesting. It doesn't matter whatever happens in the band, mm. it will. Yeah. Grimethorpe are a, a loan to themselves. It's, it's inferior to uh, Grimethorpe band. But it is our next year, 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 yeah. And I, I think for my lifetime anyway, as long as I've known them, it's just been a kind of constant soap opera, isn't it? Mm. It's been that one band that's managed to raise the, the, the standard in, in so many different ways, the, the things that they've done. And then suddenly they'll just self-destruct. They've got a button sitting there. They just like to press it every couple of years. They get the, one of their best bands. I mean, 10 years ago, when Alan Muthington was there, that was one of the greatest bands we've ever heard. The, I, was, I think we could pull it back to one point with the Withington one. They were going for the hat-trick at the Albedor and they drew number one. Yeah. And all of a sudden... That was it. Yeah, it was that. You know, nothing was the same after that. I mean, how many times has that band reinvented itself over the years? It's a, re keep, it's a remarkable history. It's, 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 it's a it's, remarkable it's, there's history. A, there's, a, there's a certain element of brilliance about them that no other band, and it doesn't matter how good, no other band can quite play. And when they're in the mood, when the heads are all screwed on right and they've got the right man in front of them, there is no other band in the world that could play like that. You know, 
Will it be Philip McCann with them? Bob Charles did it twice. He won the Open with them, won Brass in Concert with mm. them. Great achievements for the band that's been, especially with the Open, when yeah. the Open for since 91, I think mm. it was. Great achievements what he did in the three years that he was there. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the, they come and go, don't they? But Bob Bob did terrifically well. In the same mould that he did brilliantly with Corey as well. It's, I mean, Bob's record at the British Open is just... Stan- yeah. I, think yeah. he's six, I think he's yeah. a six, six Open. Times uh, well, he's yeah. the most successful living conductor of the British Open. Yeah, he's, oh, yeah. He's, he's won more British you know, Open titles than anybody else. I, I think maybe the astonishing thing is that Philip McCann's never won the British Open or the National mm. and any of these big things. For somebody who's been such a massive figure in brass band and also such a great conductor. Mm. You know, we worked with Philip for a long time at, at Whitburn and I've never known anyone with such a great ear for picking up stuff that's gone wrong and for mm. fixing stuff, for getting the nuts and bolts of performance together. I've never known anybody like him, I think he's fantastic. You, think you, bring, so you bring that, that extra layer to, to that to put Grimthorpe, you know, the, the players will already have their yeah. own extra special ingredient. You put that in there as well. You could see great things for Grimthorpe, I think. We should be excited about it. And the press release that came out, it said, we're reaching for the stars, right? Get there via the moon. I think. <laughs> no, I don't know why. He wouldn't be the great astronaut somehow, Philip McCann. <laughs> we just had via the moon. We just stop off there. But uh, I think the the other thing about Grime Thought though is this, the soap opera, which you which you quite accurately <laughs> described, because I think that's a very good way of putting it. Um, it, it there's a fascination with the band by, oh, by the banding is. public. I mean, I you know we you cannot go to a contest without being fascinated by the performers mm. that Grime Thorpe are going are gonna to give. Um, and it, it just, it comes with the territory with them, doesn't it? I mean, mm. we all go to the Open, we go to the Nationals, and Grime Thorpe, you want to know what they're going to play like. So there is a fascination with the band. And, and I think this next Saturday, this is, the draw, they are a, next Saturday yeah, is yeah, going to be a fascinating They are a draw card. It's no, no doubt about it. It's likely to finish 12th if they have to win it. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, know. yeah. yeah. You're yeah. looking back and you think of the great bands that we've all been up against Black Dyke. If you ever beat Black Dyke, it was a great cause of celebration. You know, some of the times you beat Grimes, they'll be the right by coming 12th, yeah. which was never that, never that great, really. I think one of, one of, one of the, the key things now is that Bob, Bob Charles essentially rebuilt that band when he went in there three years mm. ago. And it had been through a pretty tough time, hadn't it? He went in there. Organisationally, um, it's been a struggle for them. You know, they've yeah, they're, they're yeah. never really managed to reach their full potential for very long. No. Mm. There's always been stuff going on behind the scenes, but there's the current adjudicator who's sitting in the hall listening to this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Most probably, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's, that is something he's else. Right, I think he's writing a note at the moment, it is, yeah. See those three blokes up there, yeah. Just go and sort them out for me for a moment. <laughs> but, but the key to it, as you said, is that they've always had those players there. The brilliant players yeah. there, and, yeah. and the key if they've had a conductor who has, be, uh, has been there and that connection has been made. But it's sometimes you just sit back and you just say, Well, Jan, nobody's going to touch them yeah. today. Yeah. yeah, if you go back to the time when Frank was there in the, you know, the late 80s, early 90s, I mean, that was one of the real high points for Graham Thorpe, wasn't it? And they weren't they just doing it at the Open and the National, they won the National with New Jerusalem. That's right, there. yeah, one of the real great performances. Yeah, yeah, um, and same with Paganini at the Open when they won mm-hmm. that. But if you listen to some of the recordings they did as well, we're talking about how you play swing music. Yeah. They got it. Mm. Frank got it. And he made the band do it as well. We're talking about that, and if you're going on, when you've got a band, it reminds me a bit like Chelsea with the football, and that, you know, you can have this collection of brilliant players, and they just bring another manager in all the time, and then it works for them. Yeah. Other bands, you've got Black Dyke, Nick Charles has been there now 16 years. Yeah. Uh, you know some of the other bands who have long-term conductors, but for other bands, the turnover of conductors or turnover of players mm. seems, in a way, to en- re-energize them all the time. Yeah. And Grindr yeah. seem to be a band. They've got players who've been there some players yeah. who have been there a long yeah. time. Yeah. You know, but f- for some reason, it seems to be it's, a, it's a not mixture. Not, it's not always works. the easiest environment for a conductor either, is it? So no, I think some of the stories from the past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walking into the lion's den. Yeah, is, uh, I think there's yeah. quite a few conductors whose reputations have been left in tatters after being a great, a great some great conductor. That's true. Them, yeah. 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 Peter Parks went to Graham Thorpe. He was really un- quite unsuccessful I after th- having done great yeah. things with the Black Dyke and Fairies. Howard yeah. Snell went there in the early 70s. 70s mid-70s. Yeah, yeah. He, he went there for a, for a short period of time as well. But other conductors then have been there. Yeah. Brian Grant has, had a, has been there yeah. on and off for many years, done great yeah. work uh, with them conducting for, for concerts. So interesting times with Grant of Colliery Band as well. And But also talk about next week, we've got the national championships. Looking forward to that. It's, it's going to be a great contest there. Well, I think we've got a fine test piece, haven't we? It's uh, Simon Dobson's Journey of the Lone Wolf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Good piece. It. Good piece. Yeah. It'll go yeah. down well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, very technical piece, I, I think. It'll be a, another one written for Black Dyke. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Unless we see it at the open, it's not necessarily an advantage. No. Well, nowadays, no, no. You, you're talking about that. Somebody said to me, you know, does it give these bands advantage? But the very best bands are full of players. It's, it's it fairly meaningless yeah, I mean, now. I, I don't think it, it does you know, at all, no, no. You know, when, when you look at it in that way, I think it was a famous example, was it with um, Harry Mortimer? Eric Ball was conducting Reserga, and then Harry Mortimer came up and conducted, and Eric Ball was in tears saying, you know, if I'd known that, you know, you could have written it because that's the way it should have been played. So as long as you've got a great band, a great conductor, whatever's yes. put in front of them is, is going to... And of course, I mean, Corey, I mean, I mean such towering form at the moment. Oh. That, uh, and I think it's the sort of piece that the Corey will, will play very, very well in the Royal Albert Hall next week. So, um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a fascinating well, contest. You, you look think, at the list of contenders as well, though, it's, it's not just these bands, there are five or six other ones that could all be in there. Yeah. They're, you don't you don't form. tend to get an upset at the Albert Hall. You don't tend, it does tend to go with the form book of the Albert Hall because the the acoustic of the hall is the big sounding bands, it's the yeah. bands with the stamina, it's the bands in the last minute and a half, you know, all of a sudden it's like a turbocharger coming Although in. Although there's, there's occasionally a band that'll creep into the bottom of the top six, aren't there? I mean I think we had uh, we had zone one in there. Didn't we a couple of years ago? No, I think. No, so didn't they come seven? I think they come so seven. Just outside seven the top six. I don't think yeah, we've got, yeah. yeah. got a London band in yeah. there. There was a Cornish band last year. Campbell. 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 If Roger is listening to us in the hall, we do apologise. I hope you'll put our foot in it too, too much for him. Sorry about that, Roger. We'll buy you a pint afterwards for that part of it there. So I think with all that, we're getting the, the notice from our floor manager who's in front of us giving us a smile and the, our clock has gone haywire. So we are, I don't know what time zone we're actually in at the present time. So we'll be going back to join Simone in the hall anytime soon. So please bear with us. But for this, we're going back to Simone. A very good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen.